So you want to work with H.265 or HEVC video files and edit them in Adobe Premiere, but you're having problems, so let's have a look at how to solve it. So I've just got a Canon XF705, which is a great camera, lovely picture quality. Using the HEVC format, one minute of video will give you about a one gigabyte file size. If you compare that to something like DNX HD, that's gonna end up around three and a half gigabytes. And if you use ProRes, that's gonna be around nine gigabytes. So it's a massively smaller file. Now, if we forget Premiere for a moment, one of the first problems you're gonna come up against is you're gonna copy the files over to your computer and you're not gonna see any thumbnails. And then when you try to open it in a media player, you're probably not going to be able to play it either. So I thought, right, I'll install the Canon software that comes with the camera and that will solve it. Even after I'd installed that, it still didn't work. So normally I can play anything with a VLC media player, but I fired that up on a Windows 10 PC and it didn't work. So then I fired it up on the Mac and I tried it with VLC, I tried it with L media player, I tried QuickTime and nothing worked. So eventually I got the files to play on Media Player Classic, which is great because it's freeware and I've put a link to that in the description below. Now I couldn't find any Media Player that would work on the Mac, but remember I'm talking about playing the files outside of Adobe Premiere. So once you get into Premiere, it's fine. If, if you never look at your files, outside of the editor then that's not a problem but i'm really i like to get organized my files i like to copy them over onto the system look at all the shots sometimes there's some shots i want to get rid of because they're taking up space so i want to be able to see the thumbnails and play it and i'm sure this is something that will be added on later versions of windows and mac os and uh, i'm sure in two years time this probably won't even be an issue but right now this is how we're going to solve it now, in an ideal world, you'd bring your H.265 HEVC footage into Premiere and it would play back nice and smoothly. But as you can see from this short clip here, this is James' point of view of the very, kitchen. It can hardly play it. At best, it can play it for a second and then it just goes into super jerky mode. Before I create a proxy for this sample clip here, you need to be aware of a bug. If you modify your audio channels before you create the proxy, you can run into problems where the audio disappears, the waveform disappears. And when you switch to proxies, you won't have a waveform, you won't hear the sound. And one of the things that can cause this, if we go to audio channels, I've got four channels, Channels one and four are empty. Two and three contain my voice track. A lot of people will change that to one and just take the one voice track that they need. And the problem with that is when you go to create your proxies, everything will look fine. But when you toggle this and you turn proxies on, you'll find that the waveform disappears. So it's very important that you create the proxy before you muck about with any of the audio channels. Let's create a proxy. Now, if you're just doing one clip, you can right click, go to proxy, create proxies. But there's a good chance that you're going to have more than one clip. So it's best to put them in a folder and then right click on the folder and go proxy, create proxies. And then it does everything within that folder. Now, if we look at the presets for proxies, I've created this one here called proxy ingest. And the reason I've created that is that it has a logo overlay, but I'm not going to use that now because what you'll see is when you're editing 4K, when you switch to the proxies, it's very clear that you're in proxy mode because of the dip in quality. So I'm not going to use that. And what I'm going to go for is the Apple ProRes 422 proxy using 720p resolution. And the reason I'm going for that, a lot of people go for Cineform, but the, the files you end up with are twice as big, I find. And I can't find any reason why I shouldn't use Apple ProRes proxies. So I'm going to choose that preset. I like to have the proxies alongside my original media. So now I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to send it over to Media Encoder. So if we go over to Media Encoder, you can see I've got this clip here. I've chosen this one. It's not a great shot, but I've chosen it because it's the shortest one I could find at 14 seconds. It's from the other YouTube channel I run with Roger Bisbee called Skill Builder. And this is Roger filming on his new XF705. It should chug through this quite quickly. Once it's finished, it lets Premiere know that it's created the proxy. Make sure you've got your CUDA renderer enabled. And we are done. We head back over to Premiere. There's our clip. Now you'll notice that it says the file name and underscore proxy, which lets you know it's created the file. If you can't see this, you just need to right click in this area here, click on metadata display. And if you look at the Premiere Pro project metadata, one of the options is to show proxy media file name. Drop that on the sequence, select this clip. This is a 4K clip on a 1080p timeline. So I'm just gonna quickly change that back to 50. 
When you select this over in the info here, you've got the original file 4K and it's just letting you know that it's linked up the 720p proxy file. And the last indicator is if we go full screen on our program window, at key on the keyboard, this button here toggles between the full quality and the proxies. If you haven't got this button, you need to click on plus here and it'll be in the button editor here. You just need to drag it down onto this panel here. So what you'll notice now is the scrubbing performance is super smooth. And that's where we are with uh, editing H.265. Now, had I not used the ProRes 422 proxy and I'd come in here and I had chosen, say, the GoPro Cineform codec, when I think by default that has the quality set to four. And what happens is you end up with a file which is bigger than the 4K file, which is crazy. So I think you're better off with the Apple ProRes 422 proxy. As I said, it's not an ideal solution, and it could be that in a couple of years, we won't need to worry about proxies for this kind of footage, but this is where we are right now. Now, at the moment, there's one thing that Adobe haven't included, as far as I can see, and that is the ability to delete the proxy files. You can just go into your folder in Explorer and find it yourself and delete them, but then Premiere gets confused and asks you where the files have gone. So it would be good if you could right click on here, come to proxy and have an option to delete proxies remove proxies or whatever but that's not there at the moment so there we go there's an idea for you adobe so you've created your proxies your editing's fine your program's ready to go and all of your problems are behind you right no there's one more problem that you're going to come up against and that is when you go to encode it and what you're going to find sequences that contain h265 hevc files take much longer to encode now as a little footnote to the whole h265 format it was first introduced in 2013, I think, and one of the reasons that it's taken so long to become a popular codec for content creators is that there are licensing issues. I think there are three different licenses involved. So this has pushed a lot of big companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft and Netflix into joining the Alliance for Open Media, who are working on a royalty-free version called AV1. So maybe that's something that we'll all be using in the future. So let me know your experiences with H.265 HEVC. Maybe you've got a nuclear powered PC which blasts through it and you don't know what I'm on about. Uh, I'm thinking about upgrading to the AMD platform. I've been with Intel for about 10 years now. The latest AMD Threadripper processors are looking really good. So maybe if I go over to a, yeah, a 40 core monster, none of this will be a problem. So hit subscribe. I'll be back with more videos soon.